Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Wah! So for today's video, we are going to be speaking about what is PDA? So PDA, Pathological Demand Avoidance. So we're gonna be covering what that is, what the characteristics of a person with PDA is, what strategies can help. So yeah, I'm just trying to do some videos about some of the more umbrella terms of a diagnosis of autism and ADHD, some of the things that don't get a lot of awareness. So first, if you could please smash me a big thumbs up down below and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Let's just get on to the video. So you may be thinking, Molly, like, what is PDA? So, PDA stands for Pathological Demand Avoidance. So that's what PDA stands for. So PDA is an abbreviation of Pathological Demand Avoidance. So, yes, that's that part done. So, let me just quickly give you a quick explanation of what PDA is. So the current like understanding of what PDA is, is that it's actually not a formal diagnosis in its own right, but it needs to be diagnosed as a diagnosis itself. It needs to be known as a formal diagnosis on it, of its own right. So it comes kind of as a diagnosis under the umbrella of autism. So you can't really just be diagnosed with PDA because there's not enough evidence to support formal diagnosis on its own. So within an autistic diagnosis, they will say you have autism traits along with PDA traits. So that is an umbrella term for an autistic trait, which just translates as you have autism and you also have PDA, but they won't give you a formal diagnosis of PDA for some reason. So some of PDA characteristics are extreme mood swings that can really switch like quite suddenly. So you could also have re a really hard time expressing your empathy and your emotions. So someone with PDA could feel very comfortable in role play and like make believe, pretend. So people with PDA could also become very fixated and obsessed with people or things. So often people with PDA can become very impulsive. So PDA is an autistic spectrum diagnosis. So someone with PDA, like they look social and and they look like they are comfortable in social situations but they actually lack understanding so people with pda could feel that they need to be in control of every situation and if not it can lead to severe anxiety so someone with pda could resist and avoid and like a normal chores daily routines daily life demands so it can affect the way people interact and communicate with people in social situations. So somebody with PDA can also get very kind of like focused on imaginative play, like role play. They can get very involved in like make belief and pretending. It just makes them feel kind of like they have no uh, like pressure and, and no like demands of normal life. You know, it's make belief so they don't feel that pressure. So someone with PDA finds it really challenging when someone kind of speaks to them with direct demands like you must or you will or I need you to. That can really trigger someone with PDA. It can give them anxiety, make them kind of look like they're being antisocial or angry, but actually you're making them panic by the way you're demanding that they do something. It can make someone feel very pressured and under pressure. So when you have some, like a friend or a child with PDA, always be careful how you kind of instruct them and demand what they do because it can be very triggering to a person with PDA. So, you know, by reading some people's blogs and going and doing some of my own personal research on Twitter, I haven't actually used Google or Wikipedia for any of this. I've spoken to people with pathological demand avoidance and I've actually kind of read threads on Twitter about, about you know, what PDA is and how it can easily affect someone's day-to-day -day life. So what I've done is I have kind of got some tips on how to help someone with PDA and how to kind of ease their social anxiety. So I thought I would give you some of those. So here are some strategies that could help your child with PDA. So yeah, for example, you could say, I'm giving you all of today to do your chores. I don't care when you do it, I just need them done by today. You're not giving them a time, a, you know, you're not giving them a time limit, you're not giving them demands, it's just, I'm giving you all today to kind of do your chores. I don't care when you do it. You have the freedom to choose when you do it, but I just need them done by today. So kind of giving them options and the choice to do it when and how they want to do it. So again, just giving someone with PDA choice 
rather than demands can be really helpful and can ease their anxiety. So someone with PDA could come across like they're Jacqueline Hyde, you know, like they're happy one minute, then they're like really angry. They could literally be like two separate people within like 10 seconds of each other. So again, that is a symptom and a trait of PDA. So whilst doing my research about PDA, I come across this trait, which made me think, well, if it's on the autistic spectrum, wouldn't that be going against kind of what autism is? And I have to kind of re group my thoughts and had to like retype in what I was searching for because I thought I'd come across the wrong PDA. It says people with PDA don't like structure or routines and that really got me confused you know because I thought well people with autism don't like it if their routine is disrupted or you know something changes like unordinarily but it then says people with PDA don't like strict routines or kind of structure so that really got me thinking like wow like why how are they kind of diagnosed under the same umbrella when in reality they they have their own separate criteria i hope this video is giving people the knowledge and the little facts that i didn't even know myself and i have kind of known about pda a long time but by learning some of these things it's definitely made me think like pda really just does need to have its own right and have its own diagnosis criteria so important that people get to know what PDA is it's super intense for a person with like PDA to live an everyday life and the everyday demand of life can be very intense and very overwhelming for a person with PDA so I really hope this video has given if you don't know what PDA is and now you're at the end of this video and you think wow I've got a good understanding of what it is I hope I have done that for you and thank you for sticking around and watching this video I'm really like up for kind of raising awareness for all these umbrella diagnoses, these subtypes diagnoses of autism and ADHD. So I just really hope that this has helped you learn something new about PDA. So thank you so so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed please give me a thumbs up down below and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I would super appreciate that and well let's just say the next video is going to be what is ODD. So I hope you look forward to that. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.